I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews with Gareth Wood, the COO of Bumper. Gareth, welcome to the show, and it is a pleasure to have Bumper back once again. Yeah, thanks, Ashton. Uh, pleasure to be here. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into the solutions that Bumper is providing, uh, a lot of protections that are well needed uh, in the market for downside protection, protecting from risk. I would love for you to kick it off for our viewers with just a high level overview for those who didn't see our first interview uh, with Jonathan, the CEO, uh, about what is Bumper and a little bit more on the solutions that you're providing into the market. Yeah, so really simple. Um, start with a simple analogy in that, you know, let's say you've got some ETH, you got one ETH, maybe you picked it up at $3,000 when it was a bit more toppy than it is now. Um, and you've essentially um, protected it through bumper, ninety percent value. So you know that if it drops below twenty seven hundred dollars worth in value, then bumper protocol kicks in and makes sure that you're protected. So the price can plummet down to two thousand, let's say, and you can pull it out at that point, and you'll walk away with twenty seven hundred dollars worth of value. So you pay a premium for that, and that premium incentivizes the other side of the marketplace that helps provide that protection. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's great to know. And it, that's from what I understand, it's a little bit different than, you know, people that are traditionally trying to hedge their assets will sell into tether or, uh, you know, just try and sell off and, and buy back lower. Uh, but you don't have yeah. to sell off necessarily. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So the beauty of it is that, the kind of other options are, you know, options, desks, which can be very clunky, not quite enough liquidity in the market these days, uh, not in, not in uh, crypto anyway. And um, you kind of fix timelines, um, you know, that kind of thing. You then have the other option, I suppose, a stop loss, which is a one-way ticket, right? So you put a stop loss at that, you know, 2700 um, and that's it, you're out. And if it pops back up above 2700, it's a small dip that um, was inconsequential in the whole scheme of things. Mm -hmm. uh, you wake up the next morning and you're out and ETH has popped back up to $3,500. I think we've all been there. It's <laughs> really frustrating. So, so what this does is it just gives you that, you know, that peace of mind that you've got it protected. So it doesn't matter if it goes below a certain point, which is the stop loss mentality but you've also got it on the way back up. So mm -hmm. you can essentially buy back up. Um, and we do, we do some pretty, it's, it's, it's really simple in theory. Um, to execute is very difficult. And uh, there are some fundamental uh, hurdles we had to um, resolve. Um, and it was in that resolution, um, kind of solutioning those problems that we actually came, uh, came up with Bumper. Mm hmm. Very interesting, Gareth. And from what I have seen on centralized trading platforms, you know, they have stop losses, like you mentioned, they don't really have something like this. And then on decentralized platforms and trading on Uniswap, they really don't even have any of those functionalities. Um, so w with Bumper, I'm guessing you're going to need to use the wallet that you would use from the decentralized exchange or having your own uh, custodied wallet. And then you would just interact with the bumper platform to be able to protect those assets. Yeah. So what happens is that you, let's say you use MetaMask, it's decentralized. So you just connect your wallet um, to the bumper DAP. You, you go into that DAP and you take out protection. Um, you're then sent back a, um, representative token called BETH, for example, if you're sending ETH to the protocol, um, and that will represent your um, proportion of the unstable asset pool, the ETH pool. Um, on the other side, and what we call those people that are taking out protection, they're getting a policy, those are takers. And then what we have on the other side are makers. And makers are um, essentially liquidity providers that provide stable coin to the protocol. And what they do, they receive um, a BUSDC. For example, if you send USDC, you get a representative token back, 
which represents your proportion of the capital pool um, of of the um, stablecoin assets. So what then happens is that you now um, the makers are incentivized because they receive the premium fees from the takers. The takers pay premium fees to maintain the policy. Um, Bumper Protocol takes a small clip out of that to help you know keep developing the protocol, and um, essentially that's how how it really basically works. Um, mm. To you have both parties fundamentally incentivized one way or another. One is to protect from downside risk, and the other is to um, uh, earn yield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and your team recently launched uh, the the DAP going live for users to start uh, earning yield on, on the stable coin and to start protecting uh, assets. And now on the stable coin, I saw that in a short amount of time, over $10 million was locked into the DAP. That's incredible. Uh, can you talk about yeah. the launch? And you know, that yeah, 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 it was, it was, um, it was really good. We had our, our dev team. Um, it was a fun, fun day, actually, you know, very kind of methodical and deployment. Um, checks and balances were very um, professionally done. And what we, what we, um, I know I spoke with Jonathan the day before and we thought, you know, if we get a million dollars in, in the first 24 hours, I think that'll be a win. And um, when we went live, it was just, you know, it was moving so fast. It was all of a sudden million and then next minute you're kind of talking four million. And that was in five minutes, four million in five minutes, and then eight million in the first four hours. Um, we're now sitting at about 11.7 or 8 million. Um, and so it's been really successful. This was designed to bring LPs into the protocol to play that maker part of the uh, protocol to incentivize them. Um, but also to get people, uh, interested in bump and you know this is this was an opportunity before pre-sales and uh a public pre-sale and, and and a proper public sale mm -hmm. um, like an ido to actually get yourself some bump but to do that you've got to earn it you've got to bring some usdc into the protocol um, you then have um, an option just to farm it you farm bump by providing the entire amount or you can take 20% of whatever you deposit and you can use that to buy bump directly. And mm. that can actually increase your yields quite well, um, your bump allocation um, far greater. So um, yeah, it's been really, really um, positive. We've been pretty, pretty chuffed with it and um, hopefully it keeps going. <laughs> Definitely. And is there, uh, is there a limit to how much should go in there or is there a threshold where if there's, if there's enough, or if there's too like a lot, then it's gonna make the protocol work better or worse. Um, and and can users still put in it right now? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can still put it in right now. There's no limit. Um, what we've done is it's a bit unusual. We've tried to do something a bit different to what's out there because the we felt the TVL was an important aspect and getting more value locked into the protocol really um, will help the protocol. So what we did was we aligned the price of the token with the TVL. So um, as you deposit, uh, you capture a new price point and that sets the, the new price point that was captured. So um, it drives the price drive, it goes up and um, the value, as the value goes up, the price goes up. And so it's almost a, um, you know, something that you don't need to actually set limits on people. You know, it's kind of an, a native limitation. So it's how much is value there is and what, what, what the protocol is capable of, what the team is capable of and what we're outputting. Um, so I think, you know, by all accounts, we've, we've had a very positive response um, in such a short time. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And uh, with users locking in their funds, they're able to acquire bump tokens. 
Can you talk about the timeline on what happens when you lock in your funds, then you're waiting for bump tokens, and then users are also waiting on on the Ether side as well? Yeah, so there's a lock up to October 14. That's for this LP program. At that point, you'll be able to withdraw. Um, the ETH side of things we're going to bring in later. Um, and that's something that, um, that is the actual protection side. So you've mm -hmm. got to see this protocol as two, two, two parts, right? So the first part is, is your, um, your taker side and your maker side. And we've done the maker side and now we're going to do, we will, um, build out the taker side. So it was important to try to, I guess, front run that liquidity provision so that it's there ready for people because if there's nothing in there then people can't take protection out so mm -hmm. so we wanted to build that up incentivize that accordingly and then we and then we um output the you know deploy the actual protection side which is far more complicated side of things um and uh requires a fair bit of work definitely and maybe you can touch on the bump token a little bit more you know people are locking in their funds to acquire bump and then when mm -hmm. they when they lock, you know, when the, the Ether part is live, uh, do, does it require a small amount of bump tokens? Um, how else is the bump token used in, in and outside of the ecosystem? Yeah, so um, when you come into the protocol, whichever side you're on, you need to um, stake bump. So bump will be critical in terms of accessing the actual marketplace. The other thing is that eventually we will look to, you can pay your fees in Bump. Um, there'll be some utility and all of that. Um, but the biggest thing with, um, with tokens and something that, you know, I think few projects actually kind of really, really get is that you need to have a, you have to think about whether you actually need a token. Like we're in crypto, it sounds crazy. Do you need a coin? Do you need a token, right? Um, and there were a lot of projects over the years that really didn't need a token to function. Um, but what that token was, was really a, um, a, an effective means of fundraising, which is all good and well. But uh, for future, um, you know, uh, use of the protocol, it may not have needed a token. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to put the value into the token to make sure the token is almost like the, the oil in the engine, um, which it is. So so what we try to do is drive everything towards that value in, in the token um, by utilizing it. So there will be a whole bunch of a range of things that we will bring out over time, uh, incentive based and, um, you know, access passes and all kinds of things so that, you know, the more tokens you hold the more committed you are obviously it's a governance token so first and foremost it it represents your opportunity to vote and be a part of the community to decide mm -hmm. on the future of bumper um, but what what we by trying to drive everything into uh, you know the value of that bump token is what you're doing fundamentally with tokens is you're aligning the user with the token holder so like a traditional company where you have shareholders and users of that business that buy a product from the business for example they're not aligned mm -hmm. so the user goes into the business to buy a product because they need it the shareholder is there to ex to extract uh profit from the business mm -hmm. so they don't align and what tokens allow you to do in the ecosystem that is cryptocurrency is allows you to align that so by making the token um, critical to the use case and the utility of that protocol you now um, create a situation where the token holder is now a shareholder that has value and can extract economic value from the protocol but at the same time is also a user and can use the protocol with the needs to use you know uh, have that token to actually use the protocol mm -hmm. and so everything we can do to drive you know value into that bump token is only going to benefit the user and the token holder definitely gareth well said yeah and, and um so you mentioned 
October 14th will be unlocked. Can you talk about the main goals for your team between now and, and then and even just the end of the year? And what are the main focuses you're looking at delivering? Yeah, so I mean, the main thing is the is the build, right? So we went into a an early design and scoping phase, um, which involved the entire build. We broke it up into two parts, um, designing for the, the maker side, and then designing for the taker side. We then deployed the LP program uh, on the maker side, we then went into a design we've gone into a design and scoping phase now so that we can um, further evolve it's actually got bigger than it was um, it's becoming more complicated we're addressing a lot of really interesting things and we're trying to uh, tack on some more um, i guess opportunities to to you know deliver a product that that has a whole a bunch of bells and whistles from the start so mm -hmm. what that what that means is that um you know we felt we needed to go back to a bit of a um, design and scoping phase again so we're currently in that and um and then we kick off the build again and we'll move through to to the end of the build and release the protocol um in its full glory and then after that we have to um you know the kind of challenges will be you know iterations upon that so We'll want to add new coins. We'll look to a BTC, um, like a wrap BTC or REM BTC or something like that. Um, and then we'll, we'll also look at kind of L2 solutions, um, other blockchain networks. Um, you know, the, the other thing is that we've got, you know, a lot of parameters that parameter settings that we will go to market with. And so what we want to, do is then obviously when it's out in the wild, we adjust those parameters, trim them and make them better and just make the whole bumper protocol far more efficient. So um, there'll be a lot of iterations and um, and then obviously we'll be keeping an eye out on rigs. That always seems to be the, the kind of looming cloud on any cryptocurrency um, project, whether it's DeFi or CFI or anything. So always keeping an eye out on what the, the latest status is with that and how we can mm -hmm. adapt to that. Definitely. Lots of stuff to do. Uh, and yeah. for the viewers that are looking to start utilizing on the uh, on the USDC side uh, and to follow along for the updates as your team continues building, what's the best way for them to get involved and learn more? Yeah, the best way is, I mean, jump in the community. You know, the Telegram um, chat is really good. We've got a very good engaged community um, asking some really good solid questions. Um, so you'll learn a lot there. Um, so that's the TG channel. It's Bumper Finance and the same name at Bumper Finance on Twitter. So from either of those, you'll find everything. There's also a Discord channel as well, um, but you can get all that information via the Telegram uh, pinned posts and whatnot. Sounds great. Gareth Ward, COO of Bumper, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. I will leave those links in the description box below. All the best with the ongoing growth of Bumper, and let's follow up in the near future. Great. Thanks, Ashton. Really appreciate it.